Next week marks 100 years since the charge of the Light Horse Brigade at the Battle of Beersheba. The Australian assault on the town is viewed as our most significant victory of the war. What's not widely known is the story of Indigenous soldiers in the battle. A group of descendants are retracing the soldiers' steps and their sacrifices for a country that was reluctant to acknowledge them. The mates. Ray Minicon is peering into the eyes of his ancestor, James Lingwoodock, who fought in the Great War. Well, this is my grandfather here, handsome brute. Private Lingwoodock was a cubby cubby man from Queensland who worked in cattle and was known to be a good horseman. Mr Minicon says he still feels his spirit 100 years on. I dressed up in his this uniform on um, Anzac Day and I don't know who, the, who, who is the bit most handsome here but... <laughs> it was a different time for Indigenous soldiers. The Defence Act and Aboriginal Protection Acts barred them from joining the armed forces. The burning question for Mr Minicon, why fight for a country that treated him this way? That's part of this in incredible mystery that surrounds uh, not just him, but all the Indigenous soldiers who joined uh, the Light Horse. But at the outbreak of the war, Private Lingwoodock was among 1,000 Indigenous Australians who would answer the call anyway. Uh, I guess he joined out of a sense of duty or a sense of uh, adventure. They couldn't enlist as their indigenous name, so a lot of them just changed their name to John Smith. And with the um, connivance of the recruiting officers, they were allowed to, to join up. Private Lingwoodock found himself caught up in the Battle of Bathsheba, a pivotal event in the war in which 800 Australian light horsemen charged the Turkish stronghold. Once they conquered Bathsheba, the gates were thrown open to the rest of what was then Palestine. Indigenous soldiers, such as Mr Minicon's grandfather, played a pivotal role. The Indigenous troopers were considered to be equal by the other troopers because they were all riding horses and surviving in the desert. But upon their return from the war, Indigenous soldiers were again treated as second-class citizens. You know, they couldn't eat in the same restaurants, they couldn't go into the same pubs. They were relegated to the status they had before World War I. Many stories that would go untold and a chapter of Australian history missing as a result. That's why Ray Minicon and other descendants of Indigenous soldiers are this year retracing the steps of their forefathers a century after Bathsheba. They'll reenact the charge on horseback and lay a wreath to acknowledge those Indigenous soldiers who fought. We know that our people kept the memory alive of all of these people here. We just want to make sure that Australia keeps that memory alive too. Darren Mara, SBS World News. And SBS World News will be covering the Battle of Beersheba centenary in Israel from Sunday.